Hi, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. It's Mark Bossert. I'm here with Bernie Pollock, Pollock Automotive in Vancouver, Vancouver's best auto service experience. 22 time winners of best auto repair in Vancouver as voted by their customers. Not just by some random guys that have been bribed, by their customers. We're talking cars. How you doing, Bernie? I'm doing well. Doing well. So today's victim, 2011 Ford Fiesta that had a fuse box problem. What was going on with this vehicle? Yeah, so the vehicle came to our shop. The owner needed an out-of-province inspection along with one of his complaints is that the vehicle would stall or some engine performance issues and a number of accessories that were you know, intermittently working. And he uh, mentioned that there were some problems with the fuse box or the fuses that had been looked at previously. Fuses. So where did you start? Looking in the fuse box? We did. Exactly. Just, yeah. We uh, had a look in the fuse box. We could see there was a bit of moisture in there, which is never a good thing. Some corrosion and uh, pretty well determined fairly quickly that, that replacing that unit would be the thing to do because the damage had gone uh, too far. So that's pretty rare, isn't it? That the, is that a replaceable item? Well, okay. Well, two things. Yeah. So rare. I mean, we do replace fuse boxes from time to time. There's a lot of complexity to them and we can talk about that a little more further on, but the actual replacement on this particular vehicle involves actually the fuse box as part of the main engine wiring harness. So it's a pretty involved job and uh, you know, different cars have different fuse boxes in different locations, but a lot of times they do come attached with a wiring harness. So it's a, it's, it's a pretty involved repair. So were you able to repair the fuse issues, basically? Yes, we were. So let's just get into some pictures right here and have a look. There's our Fiesta subcompact car, nice little uh, runabout car. Now let's get in some pictures here and look at some fuses. Okay, there's our fuse box. These are relays for a variety of circuits, fuses. So this is the underhood fuse box, by the way, the main engine fuse box. So uh, a lot of the fuses in this will be larger. These are called Max or J case fuses. They're the larger fuse, usually for higher power circuit loads and uh, relays for a variety of different items. But most of the items served by this fuse box will be engine components, lighting system components, heater blower, that kind of thing. A lot of it will be serviced by this. And there's usually an under dash fuse box. Some cars have like two or three, maybe even four fuse boxes for a variety of different things. But this, again, like the engine and lighting is sort of the main thing done by this fuse box, but they can do a variety of things. So as mentioned, this is a very involved repair. This is what came out of the vehicle. This is the fuse box and all the wiring attached to it. So this is not a plug in and plug out fuse box. There's a lot of wires here. It comes with the main battery cables, like even the ground strap, which is actually a separate piece. This is the main uh, positive battery cable here along with, there's actually uh, most all modern vehicles, they tend to monitor the current flow in and out of the battery so they can adjust the uh, alternator output. Again, it's a fuel economy and efficiency issue. So. It's not like they used to be where they're just simple battery posts. Everything's got more complicated and there, there are issues that happen with these particular parts too, but it's all been replaced. It's big rubber thing. This is a firewall plug. So all the wiring here goes inside the vehicle. And uh, yeah, so you can basically see there's a lot going on here. That inside the vehicle stuff is for the fans and the, the heater and stuff. Well, in this case, I'll just go back to that other picture. This, I believe, because it's all kind of wrapped around, but I believe this plug here would plug into the uh, underhood fuse box and the power would be distributed from there. So okay. again, that would be the fan, the heater, all the instrument panel controls. A lot, of, a lot of it will be, at least the power will be fed through this item here and any communication needs to go back and forth will we'll, uh, go through that wiring there. So there's a lot to be done, you know, removed, you know, and replaced. Here's a view of the job sort of partially done with the... Uh, I believe this is the new fuse box. So this is the job partially done with the, the old one out and the new one being slowly installed, but there's wires that get rooted back here and through the firewall and you know, the battery sits normally in this area. So a lot needs to be removed. You can see the headlights are out. There's lighting circuits uh, attached to this. So there's a lot going on here. This looks like an enormously big job. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty, it's a large job it's a day worth of work to take it in and take it out. And uh, I know it's a relatively simple vehicle compared to, you know, some that are out there. If that's any consolation, it's a simple modern vehicle because nothing's that simple anymore. 
Yeah, it's not like it's got three computers and body control computers and et cetera. Well, it does have that. I mean, people tend to think, and I still get people go, oh, my car has computers. Oh yeah, it's got lots of them. They've been using them for years because it's actually, electronics is so cheap nowadays and so easy. They can put it in everything. Whereas, you know, 30 years ago, it would have been an astronomically expensive to put a lot of these things in. But now it's like, you know, once the systems are developed and they're used across platforms and, and it's easy to, you know, use these modules and a variety of things. And it, it actually makes the car simpler, even with all the complexity of a modern car, there's way less wiring because you've got computers that are talking to computers. So all they need is two wires to talk to each other and then they can actuate devices locally. So we're kind of drifting a little off topic here, but that's a lot of the complexity of modern vehicles. And usually it's reliable. It's just when something does go wrong, then it can be difficult. So you don't do very many fuse box replacements. So my first question is why? And then my second question is, why do you have fuses and relays and all this stuff? Okay. Uh, excellent question. So yeah, we don't do a lot of them, but we, we do some now and again. And uh, the reason why, I mean, generally they're pretty reliable and robust, but you know, things like, well, this fuse box, so this car is from Alberta and uh, the other interesting piece of history on this car is that it, it was actually trailered behind a, probably an RV, you know, a motor home because it had brackets on the front and, and wiring. So even though the vehicle may not have that much mileage of actual driving, it, you know, it may have, you know, seen some excessive moisture and temperature extremes. So that can have an effect on the vehicle. But, you know, just sometimes things break down. There's a lot of heat that goes on, you know, with electrical circuits. So sometimes something will break down if it's not built as, as tough as it can be. I forgot your second question. Oh, why fuses and relays? What a relay does is it actually provides power. It actually allows a high powered circuit to be like shorter, like less wiring. So for instance, if you have a headlight switch, you can run all the power and say the the headlights need 20 amps of power. That requires a very thick fat wire and a lot of electricity and heat flowing through a switch. So instead of having that, you can have a relay, which is closer to the actual heavy electrical load. And then you can have smaller wiring with very little power demand in the switch. So it actually lightens the weight of the vehicle up and puts less of a load on the switches. So in the end, it's actually a lot more reliable. Thinking about actually back to the first car I owned was a 69 Dodge Dart Swinger 340. It's a pretty cool car, but these Dodge Darts, they all, even the, the cheaper models, they all had a, a current gauge, an amp gauge as to whether the battery was being charged. And they would actually run the power from the alternator through the back of the dash, through this gauge, and then back to the battery. Now it's super accurate because you, you know exactly what's going on with the battery, but the the downside is you're running this massive amount of maybe 50 amps of power through the back of your instrument panel, and it was a failure item. So while you've got accuracy, you've created a problem. It'd be better to have some way of just getting some sort of tap, you know, with a low voltage wire, low, low small current wire to just get the information. Again, not entirely as accurate, but good enough. So drifted off a bit there. And what about why fuses? Is that just for in case something gets too hot it's circuit it? protection because if you don't have a fuse then it, the wires will burn and actually you know i'm going to go back to that 69 dart of mine because i learned a lot of interesting things when i bought the car it had this cool steering wheel it was like a wooden steering wheel with chrome they were kind of popular aftermarket wheels and they had this big chrome horn button in the middle well it wasn't exactly the mo most robustly made item and I used to work for Via Rail on the trains. So I parked the vehicle in the parking lot, went out of town for a few days, came back, the car was dead. And, oh, that's kind of weird. Well, I found basically that the engine wiring harness had melted because the horn button basically held the horn, horn place. The horn button popped off and the, uh, the horn went off. Who knows how long it was in some outback parking lot somewhere, probably didn't bother anyone. The horn went off until it basically melted the wiring. It wasn't a fuse protected circuit. And so that's why we have fuses to, you know, when things get too hot or it overloads something, it'll blow the fuse. So, you know, people often say, come into our shop and say, oh, I've got a short circuit in my wiring. Well, if you have a short circuit, usually the fuse will blow or an overload or a short, but sometimes I like to call it a long circuit, you know, or <laughs> where the circuit's too long or the wire breaks, there's a, it's a different thing. But the fuses are there for protection to protect wiring. You know, this car of mine actually had to have a lot of the car rewired uh, because of that. So... That happens if you don't have fuses. Or if you have a fuse that pops and you put a fuse that's too big, you can damage your wiring. So you don't want to do that. You need to put the right fuse back in. 
Or even worst case, gas and fire don't mix too well. And they could well, that, that's right. And you know, the other thing is burning wiring. You never know what's going to happen. It could actually catch fuel on fire and then the whole car burns up. So yeah, you, you want your wiring to keep cool, keep proper and fuses are very important. And there's a lot of them. It's amazing when you look at some vehicles, the more complex vehicles we work on, like Range Rovers or fancier Mercedes. I mean, there could be like a couple of hundred fuses in, in different fuse boxes. It's quite incredible, really, how, how many fuses some vehicles have. The Fiesta, again, kind of simple. So how are Ford Fiestas for reliability? Well, we don't see a lot of them. Uh, they're not the most common cars here, but they are, like worldwide, this is one of the most common cars sold. Very popular in Europe. And in North America, they, they've sold them in different eras. There's actually, I think there's seven or eight generations. I have to do a little Wikipedia looking, but this generation, this 2011, is one of the newer generations that's been sold in North America. But they're generally pretty good. But one thing I did find, I had to do a little research. Transmissions problems seem to be pretty common. Sort of the biggest complaint and issue with this vehicle. So if you are looking to buy one, a transmission is definitely something to look at, make sure it's good. That's sort of not based on personal experience, but it could be a pretty big ticket item. So definitely something to look for and make sure it's good and it's been serviced. So how did the Fiesta run after you did this extensive rewiring job? Yeah, it was good. Uh, we tested everything, all the circuits, lights and horn and wipers and, and everything seemed to be working fine. Went for a road test, drove great. So I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a large amount of work, but once this is done, I mean, unless you take the cover off the fuse box and spray water in it, should work well for another 10 or 15, 20 years. So if you're looking for some service for your vehicle in Vancouver, you've got some electrical issues. Pollock Automotive. You can reach them at 604-327-7112 to book your appointment. You have to call and book ahead. They are busy. Or check out the website, pollockautomotive.com. Hundreds, not exaggerating, hundreds and hundreds of videos. We've been doing this for eight years now. All makes, models, types of repairs, you name it, it's on there. Or the YouTube channel, Pollock Auto Repair. And of course, we really appreciate you listening to the podcast. If you like what we're laying down, leave us a review. Thanks, Bernie. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for watching.